Hey guys, so today I'm finally going to be doing my wrap up for all the books that I read in May and June. Oh, <laughs> there are so many books to talk about. I really am going to try and get back on track with the monthly wrap ups because talking about two months worth of reading is a bit much, but we're gonna do it. We're doing it, we're doing it, we're doing it. So yeah, I have a lot of books to talk about, so let's just get into it. So May was Asian readathon, so throughout the month of May I read only Asian books, so books by Asian authors with Asian main characters. Jokes, I just looked at my pile, I'll talk about that in a second. So the first book that I read was Toradora Volume 1, so this is actually a light novel, and the reason I read this is because I found Chris's channel, Chris from Bread and Books, and she made a video all about light novels and it got me super intrigued, so I'll link it down below. And I actually had never heard of this before, which is kind of surprising because it's kind of like a popular anime slash manga series. So this is basically like a slice of life rom-com between Isaika Tiger, who is also known as the Palm Top Tiger, and she's known as the school's most dangerous creature, and Takasu Ryuji, who also doesn't have the best reputation in school and people are scared of him. And the story is basically about them developing an unlikely friendship, and it was everything. Oh my gosh, I absolutely loved this. It was so fun and cute. It was definitely a great introduction to light novels. I just love when two misunderstood people come together and form a friendship. It's just everything. It did take me quite a bit to fully get invested into the story. I would say at the half point that's when I was really really into it and the writing is definitely simple which is what I expected so it was super easy to read and quick to read but yeah I just really fell in love with the characters it was super fun and enjoyable and I'm definitely going to be watching the anime for this and potentially continuing with the light novels I'll see how I feel about the anime but if you've read this or watched this or anything let me know because oh my gosh it was so cute and I gave this a four out of five stars the next book that I read was Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor and I read this because I was a part of the Daughter of Smoke and Bone read-along but I'm not a part of that anymore because I was really stressed out at that point and I didn't enjoy this experience reading this book. At that time I was in like a fantasy slump. I was forcing it for the read-along so I'm not going to really review this book. If you watched my Asian readathon vlogs then you know why but basically I feel like I just can't review this book because a lot of my enjoyment was impacted by just me not being in the mood so I don't feel comfortable like reading it or anything like that. Yeah I didn't enjoy it but I'm definitely going to try and physically read it sometime in the future when I'm actually in the mood for it and hopefully I will enjoy it because I did really love the first book so I really hope I can enjoy this book but yeah. So then I finished my reread of the To All The Boys I Loved Before series and I listened to this on audio and yeah these are all rereads for me. I've read the first book three times which by the way this is just the dust jacket because my mum is borrowing it. Yeah so I've read the first one three times and the last two two times. I'm sure you all know what this series is about. It's definitely super popular but this series just means so much to me because it's the first time that I saw myself represented in a book because the main character is biracial being white and Korean so it was amazing to finally find a book with a main character that was similar to me because I am white and Korean and I just love the family aspects and the baking and it's just so cozy but this actually was my least favorite reread of To All The Boys I've Loved Before and I kind of realized it's probably not one of my favorite books of all time anymore. I used to consider it one but I don't know there's just a lot of times where I'm like <laughs> I don't know it will always mean a lot to me obviously. I did really enjoy oh my gosh I just realized this is out of order but I did really love my reread of P.S. I Still Love You because I used to think that was my least favorite in the series because I just can't stand Stormy but because I was prepared for Stormy's annoyingness <laughs> I really enjoyed this a lot more and I could appreciate the other aspects and I actually am team John Ambrose McLaren now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I just, I love him and I can't wait to see the adaptation of P.S. I Still Love You. I gave the first book five stars even though, like I said, there are some annoying bits. I just feel like I can't not give it five stars because of what it means to me. The second book, 4.5 stars and the third book, four stars. The next book that I read was Death Note Volume 4. This is the black edition so it contains volume 7 and 8. I love Death Note. I didn't really love the third volume. I did still really enjoy it but it was my least favourite and I was kind of scared of the direction that the series was going but thankfully I really enjoyed this and this was a four star read for me. I feel like every time I talk about Death Note I just say the same thing over and over again. I love how dark and complex the story is, I love how thought provoking it is, I love how interesting and complex the characters are. Yeah and Ryuk is amazing so. <laughs> okay so the next book that I read was actually a DNF and that was our May Books with Friends book club pick. That was Descendant of the Crane by Joan He. I'm really sad about this because this was one of my most anticipated releases of the year. I thought I was gonna love it. It's a Chinese inspired fantasy with a beautiful cover. Not that that's going to determine whether the story is gonna be good but just how pretty is this cover. And the plot just sounds so interesting. We basically follow Princess Asina and her father who is the king has died and they say it's by natural causes but she is certain that it was a murder so she kind of goes on a 
first to try and find who killed her father. It has a lot of politics and the world is beautiful, I'll definitely admit that. I loved learning about the world, it was definitely one of my favourite aspects of the book, but ultimately I DNF'd this at 50%. It was a struggle trying to read this because I just wasn't enjoying it. It had a really strong start, but then I just didn't feel any connection to the characters. The plot just wasn't as intriguing. The writing also just didn't really work well for me. It felt like it didn't really flow that well in my opinion, and I just felt like I needed to keep rereading sentences to see what was going on. So yeah, I know some people love this book, it just really didn't work for me. Unfortunately, it was a disappointment, and I ended up giving it 2 out of 5 stars. The next book that I read was A Thousand Beginnings and Endings, and this is by multiple Asian authors, and it was edited by Ellen O and Elsie Chapman. And this was the great book for the Asian Readathon, which I was a co-host of, so I'll link the live show down below where we talk about the book. This is basically a collection of short stories inspired by the folklore and mythology of South and East Asia. And I'm personally not a huge fan of anthologies because I just don't like how there's like inconsistency in my enjoyment because usually it's like, oh I love that story and then it's like, oh, oh, <laughs> you know. But this was definitely my favourite anthology that I've ever read, loved most of the stories and I just loved learning more about these Asian myths. And my absolute favourite story was The Land of the Morning Calm by A.C. Myers, which was a Korean inspired story and it was just so beautiful. It was basically a story about gaming and a girl dealing with the loss of her mother and it was just so beautifully written. The writing was amazing. It had so many aspects that I love. I love gaming. It had some Harry Potter references, some Avatar references, and I just felt so personally connected to that story on so many different levels. And what made the reading experience extra special. I was actually sick the day that I read it so I had a really sore throat, couldn't really talk, and my boyfriend wanted to hang out but I was like I need to read so I was like you can read it to me if you want and he ended up reading it to me so we read it together and it was just such a good memory. So yeah, I love that story and that's definitely one of my new favourite short stories ever. So there were definitely some really amazing and strong stories in this. Obviously some that I didn't really enjoy but overall I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. Okay so that's it for all the books that I read in May. And then the first book that I read in June was an audiobook and that was Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren and this was my first Christina Lauren book. And if you don't know this is basically a new adult book and it's a friends to lovers romance and it's so freaking cute. One of the main criticisms that I see is that Hazel is too quiet and it's like cringy to read about and unrealistic. I personally didn't feel that because I know people who are like that in real life and I actually loved Hazel. I thought she was an amazing character. I loved Josh as well so then together was just... Yeah, I really really enjoyed this book. It was just so fun and easy to read. Josh is also Korean and I loved the scenes with his family. Although, so I did listen to this on audiobook. Overall the audiobook was fine but the male narrator who narrated Josh's point of view, his voice for Hazel was the worst thing ever. It was so, so cringy. And also the female narrator kept saying Oma wrong and Oma means mom in Korean. She kept saying Uma and I'm just like, it's not that hard to say Oma, you know? Um, so that kind of bothered me. But yeah, I just thought Josh and Hazel had a super cute and healthy relationship. But I was really enjoying this and it would have been a four star read, but then the ending. It involved a trope that I'm just like, not into, so that ended up decreasing the rating to 3 stars, so I still really enjoyed it, but I just wish the ending was slightly different. At first I didn't really mind the ending, but then I was like, uh -huh. I don't know about that. <laughs> anyway, this is when my reads become super good because the rest of the books that I'm talking about are either four or five star reads. So after I finished Josh and Hazel's, I was talking to Mika from Mika August, who you should also subscribe to. <laughs> She'll be linked down below. And I was asking for some more romance recs that had a healthy relationship. And she recommended From Lake Off With Love by Mariana Zapata. And oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so happy she recommended this because this was so, so enjoyable and I absolutely loved it. So this is another adult contemporary romance. It involves a hate love romance and it involves figure skating and oh my gosh, I just wasn't expecting there to be so many elements that I loved because she didn't really say like the synopsis or anything, she just said read this. I was like, okay. <laughs> I was just in the mood to listen to another romance audiobook. So yeah, it was such a pleasant surprise and the romance was amazing. I absolutely adored the two characters and the way that the hate to love was done was just so yes because i'm quite picky with hate to love like i do love hate to love romances but i'm picky with it because i hate when it's like literal bullying to love <laughs> not into that but yeah i especially loved the main character jasmine she definitely has a strong personality and she stands up for what she believes in because of that people view her as difficult and she kind of has like a bad reputation in the figure skating world and it had some really good commentary on how if she was a man and she was acting that same way no one would question it so i really loved that there was definitely some nice feminist themes by the book and jasmine was also just hilarious one of her most iconic lines from the book so her mum is telling her how she needs to go out and meet more people and she says the more people i met the more i didn't 
didn't want to meet more. <laughs> and this book definitely isn't solely a romance. I usually don't like books that are solely about the romance. It obviously involves the aspect of figure skating and Jasmine trying to pursue her dream in that field. And there is also a strong focus on family. Jasmine is half Filipino and she's super close to the family. And her brother is also married to a man. And I just adored the scenes with the family in it. Like it was everything. Oh my gosh, why isn't this a movie? I was just thinking like this would be everything as a movie. Call Netflix. I just can't stop this smile on my face while talking about this book because it was just so freaking enjoyable. I can definitely see myself rereading it in the future. And thank you Mika for recommending it because it was everything. Also, who am I reading these adult romances? Like, that is not usually my genre, but I had a lot of fun with it. Anyway, so the next book that I read, I'm so excited to talk about because it's one of my favourite books of the year and of all time. Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. I'm holding up the arc, which is what I read from, but I also wanted to show the finished copy because isn't it beautiful? Look at the spine. But yeah, I was so happy to have received an arc of this. This was one of my most anticipated releases ever since I found out about it and it was a dream come true reading it, like... <laughs> It means so much to me because it is an urban fantasy set in Seoul. So we follow Korean characters and I'd never read a fantasy set in Seoul. So it was just like, oh my gosh, it was, okay. So, <laughs> so basically we follow Gumi Young who is a uh, Gumi Ho. So that is a nine tailed fox who must devour the energy of men to survive. On one full moon, she crosses paths with Ji Hoon who is getting attacked by a goblin in the forest. So she decides to try and rescue him. But in the process of rescuing him, she loses her fox speed, which is basically her Gumi Ho soul. So like, she needs that. <laughs> so the story is about her trying to get her bead back and obviously the friendship slash relationship that develops between these two. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I just love these characters so much. Mei Young is definitely very close off from the world because she is half Gumiho, half human. She has had to travel a lot so people don't catch on that she's not fully human. So she doesn't really allow herself to be close to anyone so she doesn't really have any friends and she's definitely really lonely. So seeing her opening up and start to develop some friendships was just so heartwarming. This is also super angsty which I loved. And it actually had really like old school YA fantasy vibes which I just really adored and I mean that in the best way possible and I just love urban fantasy I feel like I don't read enough of it and Jihoon was everything as well it's definitely hard not to love him he's so funny and kind and really wears his heart on his sleeve he doesn't hold back and he just lets his feelings out and it was just so good to read about and the romance was kind of like a hate to love slash friends to love so it was just Again, amazing. And I just love everything about this. There were times when my heart broke. There were times where I laughed. I felt all the emotions. And I love when a book makes me feel all of the emotions. And actually, there was one time where it felt a little bit insta-lovey. And I was kind of like, but that was just one time. <laughs> and overall, I did love the romance. So it's fine. <laughs> and there were also amazing food descriptions. I love green food. So it definitely made me super hungry. <laughs> I can't even explain how much I love this book. Like, it made me feel so at home. It was so enjoyable. I loved the characters. Just everything about it was just so, so good. And I definitely have some bias because I am Korean so but if you love k-dramas I think you definitely love this it's definitely felt like a k-drama if you have any recs for k-dramas similar to this I know someone recommended me my girlfriend is a gumiha so I'm definitely gonna watch that yeah I just loved this so much and five stars I can't wait for the second one as well because the ending is just like this is everything. <laughs> okay, so the next book that I read was a graphic novel and that was A Quick and Easy Guide to Queer and Trans Identities. This is basically a graphic novel and it's super, super cute. And it basically is what the title says and it is own voices. It's basically just a way to educate and also help people come to terms with their identity. And it was everything. I just had the best time reading this. Not only was it educational, but it was also super inspiring and it just made me happy because obviously this book is accepting of all identities. I was just like, oh, why can't the world be like this? The way that it's told too is really cute because it's like these snails who have observed humans and they're educating each other on like the different terms so it's really cute. And this is definitely a book that I would recommend to everyone. I think everyone can get something out of this and I just loved how it was constantly making the point that everyone has different experiences and at the beginning it says that labels aren't for everyone but it can be helpful for a lot of people and that definitions and terminology are constantly evolving. It was a five star read for me and I got Penny my sister to read it and she loved it too and yeah I just want everyone to read this but it was just so so wholesome and it also had some good advice. For example, it had some advice on how you can feel more comfortable coming out to people. And it also noted how not everyone has the privilege to come out. Just everything about this was just so well done and amazing. I loved it. It was everything. And it is out now. I did get this at Book Expo, but it came out in April. So yes. The next book that I read was my reread of Chamber of Secrets. And obviously there's not much for me to say. Of course I loved it. This was a physical reread. I annotated. It was amazing. I think this is my fourth time reading this. I think I picked this up because I was having an identity crisis. 
guess. So that was definitely the right thing to do because it made me feel so at home and comfortable and cozy and it was just, yeah. Of course it was everything so I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I read, I'm so happy I have this, The Tea Dragon Festival by Katie O'Neill. This is the prequel to The Tea Dragon Society which is a book that I read a couple months ago and I freaking loved it. It's one of my new favourite graphic novels. It's just so cute and wholesome. It will just make you so happy. So yeah, this is the prequel. I actually thought it was the sequel so when I first started reading it I was like, where are my characters that I love? That was my own fault because it is a prequel. So we actually follow Rin who is non-binary and one day they go into the forest, they stumble upon this sleeping dragon, Rin wakes them up and Aiden is like, what year is it? And then they realise that Aiden has been asleep for like 80 years or something. So it's basically about them trying to figure out what happened there, why was Aiden asleep for 80 years. But yeah, I just, I loved this, possibly even more than the Teen Dragon Society. It was just everything, the art style was even more beautiful, there were so many beautiful scenes in the forest, I love forest scenes. And we actually do have two characters that we meet in the first one, who I love, so that was amazing as well. But this story just has so much representation, a lot of LGBTQIA plus representation, and in the village they actually use sign language to communicate to one another. So yeah, this was just everything, and it comes out in September and if you haven't read this graphic novel series I definitely definitely recommend it. I feel like it'd be hard to not enjoy it. There are just no complaints that I have like it's just perfect. <laughs> I loved it and I'm so happy that I got this arc because I'll cherish it forever. It's everything. <laughs> the next book is another reread for me. Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. My love. This was my third time reading it and this was my first time physically reading it because the first few times I listened to it on audiobook. This time I wanted to physically read it because I wanted to annotate, tap it up and the audiobook is definitely the superior way to consume the story in my opinion but I definitely really enjoyed the physical experience because obviously I could annotate and I just noticed different things this time but if you're reading this for the first time I definitely recommend listening to the audiobook because the audiobook is just so freaking amazing and it's told in interviews so that's just the better way to read it in my opinion but yeah I love this story I'm not really going to talk about why I love it because I talked about it at length in my March and April wrap up but loved it five out of five stars I just love these characters and this story so much. Okay so the next book that I read was Crooked Kingdom by Leva Dugo. Finally! I read Six of Crows in February and absolutely loved it. I finally got around to it and I filmed a reading vlog so look out for that coming soon. But yeah so I loved this maybe even more than Six of Crows. I haven't quite decided like maybe it's equal but I will say the first half it kind of felt like a four star read to me and I was like ooh. <laughs> a bit concerned because I thought 100% it would be a five star read and it ended up being a five star read <laughs> but like for the first half I was definitely enjoying it but I just wasn't having that same the same love that I had for Six of Crows but then the second half was just freaking phenomenal and the way that everything wrapped up I'm so happy that we're getting a third Six of Crows book but honestly I feel like this is a good ending like I wouldn't be too sad if I didn't know there was going to be a third book but yeah I just love these characters and I love that we got to see more of the other characters that we didn't see much of in the first book obviously there were some really heartbreaking moments and I did say how I didn't really like Matthias in the first book and I did end up loving him in this one so but Kaz and Inej are like one of my favourite ships of all time and one of my favourite book scenes of all time is in this book. Like I cannot get over it. I talk about it in the vlog but <sighs> my heart. But yeah so this series is just everything. I can't wait for the third book. Oh I love this. Then I listened to the audiobook for Don't Date Rosa Santos and this basically follows Rosa who is cursed by the sea so dating her is a bad idea and I just absolutely adored this story. It had major Jane the Virgin vibes and Jane the Virgin is one of my favourite shows so it was just so enjoyable. The story deals with Rosa feelings of diaspora because she feels like she's caught between her two cultures. She does live in Miami and she is also Cuban. There are really strong themes of family which I absolutely loved and it also deals with Rosa's struggle trying to figure out what she wants for her future. But yeah like I said Major Jane the Virgin vibes. Rosa is so similar to Jane. They're both really studious, organized, responsible and Rosa's mum is like the rebellious one which is obviously similar to Ziamara and Rosa's umbrella is super strict which again similar to Alba. But yeah I loved the family dynamic. I loved the whole curse element. It was a really cute romance. I just had such a good time listening to the audiobook and the audiobook was really really good so I definitely recommend the audiobook but yeah it was just so enjoyable and fun so I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars and now the final book Red White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I freaking adored this. This definitely is super hyped right now. A lot of people are reading this and loving it. I understand why because it was just so so good. So this was our Books with Friends June pick so I'll leave our live show linked down below and up above. But yeah I had such a good time discussing it and reading it. It was just so amazing. So if you don't know we basically follow Alex who is the son of the United States of America. Did I just say the son of the United States of America? <laughs> Alex
Alex is the son of the president. <laughs> and in this book, the president is female, which obviously amazing. And we also follow Henry, who is the Prince of Wales. And it's like a hate to love romance between them two. Their romance was everything and so romantic. This was one of the most romantic books I've ever read. Like their emails and everything and the way that they talked to each other. Yeah, it was just so cute. I was like... I will say at the beginning I was kind of not struggling but I wasn't 100% loving it because I was adjusting to it being told in third person because I feel like most of the time with contemporary it's first person so there was a little bit of time where I had to adjust to the way that it was told. I loved the characters there were so many hilarious lines and moments it also dealt with so many important issues like politics, grief, sexuality and it was just so inspiring and I think this is going to be turned into a movie so I can't wait for that. So yeah if you want to hear more of our thoughts definitely watch the live show but yeah it was everything. It did feel like a four star read for the first half of the novel but then the way that everything wraps up and everything and all the things that happened in the second half it made it a clear five star read but yeah overall it was just adorable romantic hilarious heartbreaking inspiring and just all around amazing i did also listen to the audiobook for the second half and the audiobook it's fine but like the british accent is not the best so that's that for this book haul not book haul wrap up so yeah i really hope you guys enjoyed this video and i would love to hear your thoughts on any of the books that i've read and yes yeah, so i think that's all i hope you're having a good day or night and I'll see you in my next video.